he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You, you are a city unto yourself. The Bible, know ye not that you are the temple of God? And we have an enemy, a devil with an army of demons who wants to capture the city. They want to come in. And they, they have many ways. You, you have the five senses. Taste, touch, smell, hearing, seeing. And they, they work through those senses, through the senses of the flesh. The devil uses thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. And those thoughts, ideas, and suggestions come through our senses, through, our, through the flesh. And when you sin repeatedly against God, it, it opens the door for the devil to come in. It opens the door for a demon possession where uh, a demon will actually inhabit the body of a person. In, in John 13, 26, uh, Jesus was asked who's going to betray him. Jesus answered, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped it, the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do it quickly. Hallelujah and praise God. The devil entered Judas. And there are people today who have a demon in them, operating in them, functioning in them, harassing them. Praise God. We have a God who can deliver us and deliver them. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The sin opens the door. As we said earlier, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down. Uh, but what is it that causes you to repeatedly disobey God? That opens the door for the devil to come in. You have the gifts of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. And then you have the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Bible talks about the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, lust of the sight of the eyes. These, these, these again are the senses through which sin opens the door and comes into us, into our soul, into our flesh, and our soul, and our soul. Oh my God. It says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other, that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye led of the spirit, if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations. That's when you, you, you do something to provoke others to jealousy, mm, wrath. Strife, sedition. Well, this one is when you're trying to overthrow a government. Well, that must be a righteous government, because I can't believe overthrowing an evil government is wrong. Lord, speak. We just see your word. We're not trying to go against it. Heresies. It's when you're twisting scriptures and going against the word of God. 
Envies. Oh Lord. Envies. These are the works of the flesh. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelance. That's boisterous partying. That carnival. Mm. And such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You can, you can say it the other way, though. The fruit of the flesh is hate, sadness, depression. Instead of peace, you have war. Instead of long suffering, that, that being patient with a good attitude. And long suffering, you, you have impatience, gentleness, roughness, goodness, you got meanness, faith, you doubt God. You don't trust, that's what. Faith, this is the, the crime of faith is you don't you don't trust God, the creator of heaven and earth. Meekness, mm, full of pride, temperance, not doing things in moderation. Well, I heard Kenneth, I listened to a Kenneth Hagen tape. And he said he was fasting twice a week. And apparently when he wasn't fasting, he must have been really feasting to the point of excess. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said he'd rather that he live a fasted life rather than do, do what he was doing now. Meaning do things in moderation. I, I've even had to take heed to that word myself. Living a fasted life. Temperance. Doing things in moderation. Mm, the word of God. See, you have to realize we have an enemy looking for a way to get in. In the famous Trojan horse, the enemy was in the horse. The enemy was in the Trojan horse. And they left it there as a trap. You beat us. There's a trophy. And they brought it into, oh my God, they plead. Appeal to their vanity. Appeal to their oh. the devil will appeal to your pride. Dear God, I just saw that first time. Seen that movie so many times and realized the pride of life. They actually thought that the enemy was in the Trojan horse, but they, they actually thought they had conquered the enemy and they left a trophy. They appealed to their vanity. The devil will appeal to your vanity, to your, oh, praise God. He will appeal to your pride. Mm. That's how he got Nebuchadnezzar. Look what I have done. And the Lord, let him walk like a cow. The king of all the earth. Walking like a cow. I imagine a demon must have entered him. The Bible doesn't say that, but come on. He's, he, was, he was a man, but now he's walking like a, 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 a wild animal. This is the king. Dear God. When these demons enter, they, they have the capacity to take over, rule, reign. They, they need a, see, they're, they're a spirit and they need a flesh body to execute, to dominate on the earth. They, they know the authority. They, they know what a flesh body, uh, oh, praise God. We, we, we don't even know, understand how fully who we are. Jesus said, if we can speak to the mountain, the mind, we believe that the mountain should move. 
See, the demons, they understand who we are and what we are. That's why they want to inhabit us to, and, 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 and take over the body of Christ and take over people and live in them. And now we have a situation today where a, a, a lot of people, including ministers, afraid to cast out demons. Afraid to deal with demons. I've had a few experiences myself. Interestingly enough, one, I had, wow, uh, given testimony to God. I had a church and someone came in the church asking for prayer. My wife, the week before, had, had told me, the Tuesday had told me that angels were coming to the church. And so this person came up, asked for prayer, a young lady. And my wife had even questioned, well, she questioned if I actually, because I spoke in tongues, been speaking in tongues since I'm 14. And when I spoke in tongues, this lady was holding my hand and I had anointed my hand with oil. She said the oil became, she, the lady dropped on the ground and I tried to catch her. First time I ever prayed for somebody and the Holy Ghost power knocked them out. Oh, praise God. But I didn't know what was going on. She got on the floor and started to wiggle like a snake. After the service she recovered, she told us that when I started praying in, in tongues, in the spirit, uh, that it transformed. We went to a different realm. I was a different person. My hands became like iron and the oil was hot fire. And there were some tall angels with shining faces, similar to the angels that my wife had described. And she, oh dear God, the angels told the demons to come out like three times. There was like a fish demon and a snake demon. Now I, I was on the floor on my knees Worshiping God, I, I'm not in control of nothing. I don't understand what's going on, but God did something because he, he, the word says, hallelujah, that we shall cast out demons and, and speak in tongues. And the Lord was doing a sign and a wonder according to his word. But in the same vein, there was another situation where I was told my assignment because I wasn't focusing on my assignment, the Billboard Bible. The Bible, God has blessed me to be the architect behind, the software architect behind BibleBillboard.org. Goal is to put up billboards reading the Bible in every language of the world everywhere. Praise God. But God had told me to a young man, young boy, he was about 12 years old at the time, Shamar, the son of Sheldon Evans. And Shamar told me that because the Lord had told him that something was going to come against me and I wouldn't have any power because I was doing everything but what I was supposed to be doing, which is the billboard Bible. Mm. And I even had a dream where I saw this woman coming. Well, not woman, but the demons were coming to attack the church. And praise God. Yes, we praise God in all things. This, this woman came into the church and she was talking about Jesus. Oh, but dear God. There was anything but Jesus. You know, I heard somebody say, you got to say Jesus of Nazareth. A lot of people saying Jesus now, and there's nothing but the, the, the <laughs> oh, he said, many shall call on my name, saying, Lord, Lord. 
He said that. And the church began to disintegrate. Uh, we're sharing space. The people come into the church, and when they come, they see the police coming into the church. The landlord called. Uh, oh, it was just horrible. And even though I tried to cast out that demon out of her, I was weak. Just like I was told. And I was not, I had not been fasting. Had not been fasting. Mm. Dear God, so I, I, I've been in a situation where there was power. Power. And I've been in another situation where there was no power. Oh, praise God. And so now, not that I'm, we have a situation now where there's a young lady. So I'm even preaching this, teaching this message. She is being tormented by demons. And she's supposed to come today for deliverance. You know, it's funny, I try to preach the word on whatever subject we're going through. I want to look at that section where the disciples did not have power to cast out devils. In Matthew 17, 14, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to, to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and off into the water. You see that again? Uh, what you would call a lunatic, what the world calls crazy, insane, is really demon-possessed. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me, give it to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. You see that uh, insane person, what you would call a, a crazy person, was possessed by a devil. And this is what happens in the world. People are insane, and they're giving them medication. Mm. God. How are you going to medicate a demon? The real church needs to stand up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm an ordained elder. But the day when I back away from casting out a demon, a devil, is the day I need to tear up my license, tear up and, and retire from the ministry. If I can't face a demon and say, come out in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, to the glory of the Father and the Son, then why, what, what kind of minister am I? I would be nothing but a false teacher. I need to repent. I, I need to get out. I, I, oh, God. Dear God, help us. And the child was cured. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, How could we cast, not cast him up? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. But verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. And it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth out, but by prayer, and fast. Hallelujah. So unbelief. These were the disciples were men of God. Unbelief in the power of God. Unbelief. And they weren't fasting. Praying and fasting. Hallelujah. And because of that, there was a lack, lack of power. Dear God, you know, ultimately it boils down to, to you pleasing God, to God showing up. Jesus said, bring him to me. 
anchor that spoke the word, but in the presence of Jesus, God the Son, oh, no demon want to stick around there. See, there's many strategies to casting out demons. You think, think for a second if you're a bank robber and you go by the bank and you see five, six police cars, you're not going to rob the bank that day. You're going to go someplace else. And you come back tomorrow and you see five, six police cars again, you're, not, you're picking on the bank. And it's the same way the demons come, they, they see you reading the Bible, worshiping Jesus, hallelujah, praise God, glorifying God. I love that man from Galilee, for he has done so very much for me, taking all my sin, put the Holy Ghost within. I love that man from Galilee. You're going around praising the Lord. He don't want no parts of that. But if he comes by and he sees you fornicating, Having sex with somebody's wife. Getting drunk. No oh, dear God. Over eat. Being greedy. My own weakness. I got to watch that. No oh, dear God. Yeah, hallelujah. When he sees you repeatedly sin. That can give him the right to possess you. Because you're not being led by the Spirit of God. You're disobeying God. And you got to watch that. Remember, a city. A man without discipline. A man without self-control. It's like a city with the walls broken down. See, that lack of self-control allows the demons to step inside. Come inside your body. Oh, God. So they had no power because of unbelief. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So faith pleases God. That's, that's what I depend on more than anything else. The presence and the power of God because I have to realize that the Holy Ghost in me has control over those things. My flesh, you can't, it's not my flesh that's going to do this. It's the Holy Ghost in me. That's why in my, in my dream, when I saw the army of demons and I spoke in tongues, oh, that's why I had the victory. Oh, dear God, as I speak in tongues, Hey, hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, God is great. We, oh, God, we glorify you today. You got to get in the spirit and get in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, dear Lord, praying in tongues. If you don't have the gift of tongues, you need to, you need to pray for the gift of tongues. Hallelujah, you need it. You need to call on the Lord for the gift of tongues. The gift of, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I remember the Lord spoke to me. He said, the 